Good morning. This is Dr. McQueen, and I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, issue a belated welcome to uh, the PA 315, the government and business class. Um, pleased to be here. Uh, and I'm sure most of you are too, if I can take seriously what you said in your post over the weekend. I want to start by complimenting you all and, and thanking you for engaging with the introductory posts and the questions of the syllabus. It's uh, always interesting when you start an online class to, uh, to know exactly uh, uh, how the students are going to consider the class and whether they're taking it seriously or, or taking it because they think it's simply easier or a slide or whatever. And I, 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 gathered, I gathered from the discussions that most of you are pretty dedicated to your educational goals and your very hard workers and you have uh, extremely busy lives and you're hoping to get the most out of your education through an online opportunity. And that's why I'm doing it too. Um, I've been teaching online now for five years, mainly at the University of Maryland. This is my first go around in online with Blackboard. <clears throat> so I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm trying to do. Uh, I, for one, believe that the, uh, the purpose of online education is to provide an education that is uh, makes it easier for those with incredibly difficult or busy schedules to not get uh, denied an education uh, because of logistics uh, or other uh, administrative reasons. It provides you the opportunity to fit education into your busy schedule. And I will work with all of you on that, that uh, no one should be deprived of the education that they need and, and are otherwise entitled to simply because of their life circumstance. Uh, so this is a tremendous opportunity. Uh, however, comma, I do not believe that uh, anybody should take it less seriously than they would take an online class. And to that extent, I will try to make it as challenging as I would teaching a face-to-face -face class, which I've done for 30 years. Uh, not intimidating, uh, not uh, impossible, but certainly challenging, because I don't think you'd want to be in school. And I don't think that you're going to be able to learn unless you do push yourself and challenge yourself. Not so much in the amount of reading and the amount of work, that's, that's more uh, pedantic, that's more things you just count, but in the extent to which you have to think through things and in the course of thinking through things, transform the way you view uh, yourself, uh, the world around you, uh, and, uh, and your ability to understand and analyze uh, and, and come up with logical uh, positions and solutions to things. Uh, education, one of my favorite definitions, is it's what you have left over after you've forgotten everything you've learned. It's not the stuff you know, it's the person you've become. It's the way you approach problems. It's your ability to interact on complex issues on a logical rather than emotional state. And to that extent, I think uh, my job is to direct, uh, push you in that direction and to challenge you as much as you can. Enough of that, we'll talk more about that as the semester goes on. I intend to use a, a, a substantial make a substantial use of videos in this class. I think they're a marvelous way of communicating. I've taught online class with just uh, the, uh, uh, the, the papers and PowerPoints and the like, and I think we do lose something here. I'll try to meet with you uh, via the video at least uh, two or three times a month. I'll try initially every week, depends on if we have a lot to talk about. In general, I want to use them to clarify class announcements and, and logistical matters, but also try to make a few points of substance that may not be coming across in the reading. So uh, you'll hear from me uh, quite a bit. So uh, get used to this pretty face. Uh, I don't want to keep you too long this morning. It's the opening class. I want to cover a little bit of ground. So let me go through some of the points that I, uh, I want to make. First of all, I think you've been acquainted to the classroom. This is my first go around in Blackboard, so you're probably more familiar with it than I am. We will make mistakes. As I said, that's one of the reasons I apologize in advance for doing or saying something, because I can't imagine going through this process and not making uh, a share of mistakes uh, just in the, uh, the administration of it. So if you, you know, I uh, give me some forbearance, and I'll give you some forbearance as we navigate through, uh, which is a new technology, and it's a new world for most of us. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, the announcement every week will give a summary of what we're going to be doing, a little reflection on what we've done, and uh, give you the opportunity to ask a question uh, about it if need be. Uh, I will also... Uh, uh, provide every single week a question for discussion because I think that's the primary way that we learn in this online class. I'll try and identify a question that seems especially relevant to the readings and, uh, and post it and uh, go through the discussion forums myself. I read discussion forums looking for three things. One, that you answer the question, not talk around it. 
or not uh, avoid it, but you directly answer it uh, with a yes, comma, no, comma. I'm not sure is not a bad answer, but you have to explain that you understand the issue enough to be able to say you're not sure. So I'd like to see your reasoning behind the question. I'd like to see in your answer that you do make reference to the readings and class assignments and lecture, because that's one of the only ways I'm going to really know that you have engaged yourself and pushed yourself to understand. I'll try to keep the readings and the movies uh, to a reasonable level. It's an undergraduate class. Uh, I think 100 pages a week is not excessive. I'll try not to hit that level. Uh, this week we had 26 pages uh, and a video, which I want you to read, to watch. It'll be about an hour video. Uh, and I'll try to keep it manageable, but I do expect you to look at it and read it and, and bring it back to me in the discussions in the class to show that you uh, are able to understand it. Uh, uh, and then thirdly, there'll be papers, quizzes, and special assignments uh, that are going to be just like they would be in a face-to-face in a, in a -face, uh, uh, classroom. So I am uh, going to be working with you every week to describe what we're going to be facing that week. There should not be any cause for concern. If you don't understand something and it wasn't made clear in the video, you can get back to me with an email the way we've talked about. And we should uh, eliminate one of the big fears that students have about online learning is the confusion or the I don't know what's expected of me or the I'm not sure what we're doing mode. I intend to use this vehicle for communication. Let me answer a little bit about some of your, try to answer some of your questions that you posed in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the discussions on the syllabus, I think they were quite good. First of all, thank you, those of you who said that it was well organized and, and made a lot of sense. That's always good to hear because we typically hear the other, and I do appreciate those, those positive comments. Maybe I ought to use this one as a model. Uh, the only three questions that I saw came up over and over again. Uh, one is what appears to be a total aversion, bordering on panic, of having to work in groups uh, for all kinds of good reasons. I know that you've had bad experiences or uncomfortable experiences in the past with groups. And I don't think that's going to happen here because I, I look at groups a different way. I look at them as establishing a principle of collaboration, not a, simply a shared assignment, but discussing and collectively coming, to, coming to, to, together to plan how you're going to put a group project together and the role that each of you will play in putting that project together. I give two grades to each of the group projects, one for the overall product itself, the whole product held together, looked good, was evidence of collaboration, working together, it read well, something you all can be proud of and was a very good thing, easy to read and made a good point. I give a group grade, then I also give an individual grade for the work that the individual did on his or her section or the part that they were assigned to do. I like to see, uh, we'll have a group leader, the group leader indicate to me that, that uh, Sally was expected to do this and Joe was expected to do that and Bill did this, and Susan did that. And hopefully it's in the table of contents, and every chapter will have your name on it as the author. So I'll grade the individual chapters and individual portions just as I would an individual paper. So putting it through together, your final grade will be a combination of the work you did and a combination of how well the group came together. And I think that's fair, and I think that will cause you all to be motivated to, uh, to do a very good job uh, on the group work. Uh, so don't worry about that for now. There'll be a lot of discussions and times to talk about that. We probably won't get, we won't get going into the groups for about two weeks. I think week three, we organize them. Uh, secondly, uh, you're all interested and concerned uh, about the unannounced quiz. Well, that's not a big deal either because you can't do really unannounced quizzes in an online program. It doesn't make too much sense because as soon as you unannounce it to someone, they'll announce it to somebody else uh, in the next seat. Uh, but unannounced, I'm, I mean, it, it's not to be something that you uh, can prepare for because it should reflect uh, the minimum series of questions to ascertain that you have been keeping up with the class. They won't be difficult. They'll be 15-minute quizzes. They'll be issued on the Monday of a week, which will be unannounced. And it'll simply be a series of questions just to let me know that you know what we're talking about and that you're keeping up with the reading. Uh, that is a, a required of mine uh, in, uh, to, to ascertain and to certify that you have taken the class and done the materials. So this will just be a relatively straightforward series of questions that let me know that you have been keeping up. I wouldn't really sweat those either. If you are keeping up, you should do quite well. Um, and then thirdly, many of you were concerned about, I put the word in, annotated bibliography, annotated bibliography, and that sounds like Greek to almost everybody, including myself. Let me demystify that. I'm going to be asking you to look at things like news articles. This week I'm posting a video, and I'm simply going to ask you to 
uh, to, to track. I want to track uh, what you have thought about those, and I'd like you to track yourself. And so I'd like you to prepare a, but I'll change the word into an annotated brief, a one to two page outline brief of the article or the video, the major points it made, what you think about it, and why you think it's relevant to the class. I'll put that out this week as a framework. And all I want you to do with your article and with the videos is just fill out that thing and keep it for yourself initially at the end of the semester, submit it to me uh, so I can track and see what you've done uh, for the class. I might ask to see them uh, uh, at periodic times in the class to make sure that they're going well so nobody is overwhelmed at the end. But, uh, but right now, just understand that I'm going to be asking you to put together an annotated bibliography on the external short news articles, magazine articles, and videos that I ask you to read. And that's really it. That's it for the, uh, for the, uh, the, the issues you raised in the announcement. Um, I don't know that I can think of anything else in the way of getting going. Uh, this week, uh, I've asked you to look at the textbook. Uh, and read page uh, 1 to 26, which is a good history of government and business, an overview of how we got there. And I'm asking you to look at a video, which is, uh, which is put together by a good friend of mine, a fellow named Lowell Bergman, who uh, was the executive producer of Frontline and has done a marvelous series on, on various uh, abuses perpetrated by the financial institution and community. And this one particularly involves the use of credit cards. It's about four years old, but it was a blockbuster at the time. I've spoken to Lowell several times about it. He uses it in his classes. I've used it in mine. And I'm providing the link to look at. I'll talk more about that in a little while. I'm going to end uh, this version of the, this part of the video. I want to flip to a little discussion of content. So I'm going to turn it off so I can get this thing posted. And I'll commence again in a few minutes.